And welcome back to the show. In 34 years as a coach, Ira Klein's pretty much done it all. He's sent swimmers to the Olympics. He's won several national championships. He's fostered the swimming careers of countless others. Last August, Klein returned to Sarasota after about 20 years away. And last week, he helped the Sharks win their third straight YMCA national title. Joining us right now via Skype is Ira Klein. Coach, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I was looking over your bio, and I know swim coaches are known for moving around a lot, but, geez, you are certainly no exception to that. You've been in pretty much every part of this country. Uh, yes, I have, although I did get to spend nine great years in Santa Barbara. Um, but, you know, I just liked looking for challenges. And uh, it took me traveling uh, for coaching and then four years in Colorado Springs working with USA Swimming. So what brought you back to Sarasota and back to, to teaching the kids? Well, um, you know, I definitely had the bug the whole time I was in Colorado. You know, I'm a coach. Uh, I loved what I did and the people I got to work with uh, at USA Swimming, but I missed the day-to-day -day and, and the roller coaster coaches get to ride, and, um, and I missed being around the young athletes. And so... Uh, there was only a couple of places in the country, having lived around the country, that my wife and I were interested in living at. And when the job opened up and they called, I just thought this was the chance, and uh, we moved back to Sarasota. Well, the kids are obviously swimming great under your tutelage there. Uh, talk about some of the swims from over the weekend. I noticed uh, you know, one of your stars is Corrine uh, Showalter, but you got lots of kids down there who swim great. Y yes, w it was a real team effort. And... Um, you know, to just take a moment, uh, as you well know, which started off very hard because uh, my predecessor, Larry Shove, who really built the team into what it is, um, unfortunately took his own life right at the time I started. He had left for a different job, and, and um, the pressures, you, you know, and a little depression got to him. So that was hard for these athletes, and it took a while, and I say to get over, they're not over it yet but at least they're able to focus in on what they wanted to achieve. And Corinne is definitely one of the ones, you know, her entire higher-end career was spent, you know, working with Larry Schof. And um, it took a lot for, from her to get past that and accomplish what she did. Uh, and, and she was the, the force. She was a leader there. More than just swimming in the pool, which everybody can see, um, it, it, they won because of her leadership. Well, I, I did not know that backstory, and that certainly, I'm sure, added some emotion to the team, not just throughout the year, but at this big meet that they've invested so much energy into. Uh, in a way, I mean, did you feel that presence there, or was it a, I mean, was it a relieving for them to, to swim so well, thinking of their old coach? Um, you, you know, we didn't make a big deal out of it, uh, although um, Coach Schof's son, Kevin, did come down on uh, the last night, uh, you know, he goes to the University of Florida, he swam for the Sharks, these are his friends. Um, I, I think it was more in the different hearts and minds of the different swimmers. Um, and, and I think for each one, it affected them a little bit differently. But, um, you, you know, without a doubt, there was a presence there of him having been there before. Um, and, and like I said, you know, it's a great staff. My entire staff is the staff that existed pr prior to my arrival, although, you know, Coach Watts, Sherwood Watts is our age group coach. He's really the backbone. He's been there now 25 years. And Sherwood and I worked together both in Joliet and then in Sarasota. And then two of my other coaches, um, Mark Matuzak, Steve Brown, and actually John Bruning, have all swum for me at one time or another, either in Sarasota or in Joliet. So it, it wasn't like we were learning each other from start, but we were learning each other more as adult coaches rather than the prior coach swimmer. But the staff was phenomenal in creating the environment that exists there. And I'd have to say that, you know, my input to it was really just trying to continue the winning tradition that's been there for the last five years now for the women and three years for the combined and men. From your viewpoint, from your standpoint as their coach this year and getting to work with those kids in, uh, you know, such a adversarial position. I mean, the, just what they had to go through 
what did they learn or what did you learn that you could pass along to other kids who maybe not, they're not going to go through the exact same thing, but almost all teenagers swimming have to deal with adversity. So what did, uh, what lessons were learned that you could share with other clubs? Um, you know, it's hard to teach this if it doesn't happen, but to get the athletes to realize that they really are in control of their swimming future, that um, they're the ones who need to come in every day, they're the ones who need to swim hard, they're the ones who need to listen to the coach, and if they do those kind of things and work with the coach, then they have unlimited potential. And, um, you, you know, I think in too many situations, the athletes limit themselves because they think all these things are out of their control and it's all up to other people when it really just comes down to being up to the athletes themselves. So I, I think what, you know, these athletes got to learn this year, if nothing else, is that it, it's up to them as to how good they can be and will be. And Coach, in your last um, role as Director of Field Services for USA Swimming, you are basically helping clubs around the country, you know, get them the resources they need or the knowledge they need. What is still lacking with, uh, with clubs around the country other than the need for more pool space? Um, actually, and I hope this doesn't sound wrong, but the problem around the country isn't pool space. The problem is coaching. You know, it's not rocket science. Um, the information is out there, and it's easier than when I first got started, you know, back in 75, where you really had to search it out. We, you know, we didn't have internet, we didn't have cell phones, everything was done by paper, um, you know, letters, and, and um, the information is there. And, and we only have three to four hundred real quality programs in this country out of 2,700. But, you know, like one thing going back to why nationals, I was real impressed and proud of our win because I've watched that meet these last four years because I've been there each year, you know, from USA Swimming, just keep getting better, better, and better. Uh, what was 16th place last year barely made 24th place this year. And it had nothing to do with suits because I would say that this meet probably had the least impact of high-tech suits of all the big meets around the country. Um, it has to do with coaches doing a better job. Um, you know, Dave up at Schrader and Peter over at Middle Tiger, they've done phenomenal jobs in those two areas and, and deserve all the accolades. You, you know, Peter Wright was named coach of the meet with well-deserved, you, you know, reason. Um, 155 backstroke for a 14-year-old. Um, you, you know, so it's the coaching that they need to learn. And that information is there from USA Swimming. The field services department is there to go out and help these clubs, and they should be taking advantage of it. If they haven't had a visit from somebody within field services, uh, one of the consultants, then they're throwing away a great free service that they need to jump on. Now, is there a difference, though, between what uh, YMCA coaches can get, you know, than uh, people in USA Swimming? Um, if they're a USA Swimming club, um, it's all the same. It has nothing to do with whether you're a boys and girls club, YMCA, or USA Swimming. If you're just a YMCA, um, yes, they're not part of USA Swimming. Right now, they don't have access to uh, you know those services. But I would say for the hundred dollars it would cost to become a USA Swimming club, that Y should spend the dollars. It's well worth it just for one day, you know, a one day visit from one consultant. They'll make uh, you know a thousand dollars worth of a difference to their program. So um, if they're not a member, I'd recommend becoming one. But basically, all the teams that are at Y Nationals are usually USA Swimming clubs as well. Hey, Coach, one one final question. Um, I noticed that you used to coach Mel Stewart, who's a friend of the show. He's helped us out, and uh, I'd love to get some dirt on this guy if uh, you know when we have him on again. You got any old stories about Mel Stewart? Um, you know, we used to go, when he swam for me prior to 92, and um, I got him to go 400 flies in swim meets, and um, he would take it out in like 205 and then come back in 215, but um, I don't have any really great dirt. Uh, I'd have to say that 
Um, he was a talented athlete who maximized his talents. He was willing to work as hard as it took. He'd come in before practice, and you didn't have to say a word. He did two to three hundred, you know, ab, you know, workouts to develop the core long before we all talked about developing your core. So um, I, I would imagine there might be more dirt on gold medal Mel than there was on the Melvin Stewart, who I got to coach, you know, 18 years ago. Coach Klein, thank you so much for coming on the show. Congratulations on the national championship. Thank Thanks for all the work you guys do. I appreciate it. That's Coach Ira Klein joining us today.